Haunting greetings, my virtual friends. I am what you call KDOB10, and this is my spooky commentary for Dancing with the Stars Season 23. Halloween week is finally here. Plenty of spooks and spellbinding moments throughout the night. I myself had a fantastic night with my friends, even though it ended with my dumbass buying a new iPhone. But that's a whole different story for another day. Also, I still want to apologize for my absence last week. My family will always come first before my YouTube life. But there was no death whatsoever. I want to ease your minds about that. Well, enough of my pathetic self. Let's talk about this week's spooky episode. Well, this is a nice change of pace. We're starting off with Tara. Like her, I adore Beetlejuice. I even love the cartoon series. I love the joy and spark she brings to the table every week. But we're really getting close to the finals, and I want to see more oomph in her routines. However, I do commend her and Sasha for putting their own spin on a classic. It was fun and entertaining. I just want more out of them now that we're getting to the nitty gritty. Val's walls were finally brought down because of Lori's positivity. First, I want to commend him on a fantastic routine that made me shed a few tears. And it's perfect timing with using pure imagination with the recent passing of Willy Wonka himself, Gene Wilder. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is in my top 10 favorite movies of all time, so you need to be special or spectacular to pull off any song from the movie off. Lori and Val did just that. I was mesmerized by the extending of the lines and the pure optimism. And dare I even say it? Yes, yes I should. Lori is the best celebrity Val has ever had. And that's saying a lot. I was purely connected with them. I was intrigued. In general, I was just so happy. They deserve those 30s. At least Mary Lou tried. I mean, she really did. You could see how serious she was trying to be. But it just didn't pay off in the end. Derek was on point, though. I could even tell they're not even connecting, and they probably had enough of each other. Mary Lou was off-timing, and she messed up horribly at the end. And she was so slow. Like, fucking slow. At this rate, I'm just ready for her to go home for her and Derek's sake. Hell, just eliminate her for all of our sake. She's the worst partner Derek has ever had, and I don't think having her was worth him coming back to us. Calvin! I finally have faith in you! I loved the skeleton concept, so kudos to Lindsay on that. Man, I loved everything about this quick step. I loved the arrangement, which was more appreciated in this aspect than in Bindi's redemption quick step from last year. I loved the synchronization. I loved the bounce. Oh, I just loved how lively Calvin was. He just seemed to have let loose and just have fun. It put a huge smile on my face. It made me applaud for him. Oh gosh, it made me want to expect greater things in the final weeks to come. I I I'm just so happy. That was the weirdest tango I think I've ever seen from Cheryl. I mean, Lochte wasn't bad, but it was still bad. Maleficent inspired or not, that was just bizarre as shit. Even the music was horrible. If I go into deeper detail on this pairing, I just might lose my sanity. So let's just move on to Janna. I've seen mind-blowing jazzes, and I've seen jazzes that question my existence. And then there was Janna and Gleb's interpretation. I mean, what sort of fuckery was that? In case most of you don't know about it, Gleb was on last year's Strictly Come Dancing, and he delivered a fantastic Viennese waltz with his celebrity. I think her name was Anita. The shapes, the lines, the music for that performance, oh, it still gives me chills, you guys. And what does Gleb do when he comes back to dance for us, us Americans? Wonder what the fuck he was doing with Janna. I love Little Shop of Whores, but that jazz was just a poor presentation. Nope, nope, sorry, it's not my cup of tea. It was a good try, but they can do better than that. We've all seen it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am shocked by the news that we will probably never see Hinch dance with Sharna again. I was looking forward to seeing what they would have brought to the plate with the finals. But hey, maybe Sharna's substitute will be someone we all know when- Oh god damn it, not Jenna! Why not Allison? Or Emma? Even Whitney would have been a better option! 
But no. Sharna, for whatever fucking reason, chose Jenna. So I was holding my breath for Hench. Well, to be honest, I had nothing to worry about. This was incredible. Hench was a very convincing Joker, and that dance was just too damn good. If Harley and the Joker were ever to dance together for a movie, this would be my expectation. It, it don't even matter who Hinch dances with, he's going to be incredible. He, he better be in the finale, that's all I'm going to say. This was another elimination we were all waiting for. Halloween week is just not a good week for Cheryl, considering the fact that this is the second time in a row that she's been voted off. Lochte came to dance with the stars to redeem himself, and I think that's what he succeeded in. Yeah, I still think he should have waited a year or two to do the show, but hey, what can you do? Best of luck to your future, Lochte. I hope you make better choices in life now. Well, Tom was full of brilliance, wasn't he? And by that, I mean he didn't tell us what was going to occur for next week. So if anybody has an idea, let me know, please. And this is going to kill me if I don't ask this. Where the fuck was Lynn at? I mean, there was no explanation whatsoever. Also, I do want to note that this Halloween opening number was fantastic. It was much more executed than last year's. Okay, I'm done here. Sound off in the comments below. What did you guys think of this year's Halloween show? Who was spooktacular for you? Who frighted you the most? If you guys enjoyed this week's video, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel and you want to see more of me in the future, hit that subscribe button. You know, this year's Halloween video should end with a bane. But how do we do that? Hmm. Oh, I know! Hit it, Vincent! Darkness falls across the land. The midnight hour is close at hand. Creatures crawl in search of blood to terrorize your neighborhood. And whosoever shall be found without the soul for getting down must stand and face the hounds of hell and rot inside a corpse's shell. The foulest stench is in the air, the funk of 40,000 years. And grizzled ghouls from every tomb are closing in to seal your doom. And though you fight to stay alive, your body starts to shiver. For no mere mortal can resist the evil of the thriller.